Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. Day two at the Gyroscopic. Basically just like a preview of the Kansas City Wide Open. It's a C tier, so like not a preview in terms of the pros, but for me, because I'm one on the wait list, I should get into KC Wide Open. That should be my next tournament after this. I played really bad yesterday, mostly putting wise. I was throwing the disc all right, and if I would have made all my circle one putts, I would have shot even. I wasn't even throwing the disc phenomenal. So hopefully today we can just focus up. If you guys have been watching for a while, you'll know I'm pretty burnt out of these tournaments. And so I'm coming in with low expectations and just trying to have a good day. It rained a lot, so it's very very muddy, unfortunately. Try to enjoy this round, because I have not enjoyed a tournament round for a long time. Quick change to the bag. I lost that strike in yesterday's video, so we're going only with my pink strike. I don't honestly think I need the other one. I think I, it confuses me sometimes, so maybe it was good that I lost it. I want to get it back, hopefully. And then we also took out the Max Weight Ducker Stamp Destroyer, because I feel like it overlapped too much with my Halo Destroyer, and I could just throw that on the same lines. It's a little more stable and a little more domey. Probably gonna help ease my mind a little bit. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Hopefully, keeping my cash record alive because I'm one stroke out of the cash right now. Just got to play clean. Just keep it in balance. Make some butts, like more than three. And on top of my cash record, there's actually another record that I'm trying to keep alive. And that's because I only didn't cash in my first tournament of the year. And I only don't have a thousand rated round in my second tournament of the year. So since this is only two rounds and I shot 961 in the first round, spoilers, we're going to try to shoot a thousand in this round and keep that streak alive as well. Here I'm throwing my Calvin Destroyer just on a hyzer down this hill because it's a 545 foot par four. There's a water carry that you can try to go for the eagle on, but you can see it's pretty big carry down that hill. I don't even think I have the juice anyways. I just tried to take the easy shot and pitch up my zone here. I keep telling myself that the miss is long, even though I had ranged it to about 250 feet. Throw it on pure hyzer, just thinking that that might be the right miss uh, to get it close to the basket. And I'm definitely close, just inside the circle from about 25 feet. Should be able to clean up an easy putt. I was definitely practicing my putting leading up to the round uh, and trying to loft them in, meaning that they go from high to low and I just cage it. So unfortunately, that means that we have lost now eight strokes, circle one versus circle two putting, meaning that we've missed eight more circle one putts than we've made circle two on the weekend. We started that at seven. And as you can see also in the bottom left hand corner, we are plus eight for the weekend because we took a par on that first hole. So I'm trying to give you guys a lot more information like you guys have been asking for. Hole two is a 204 foot island hole. I'm going up and over everything because there is a scab here. Unfortunately, the GoPro has like terrible dynamic range with like colors and stuff so it's just like this guy is super blown out but i ended up parking it which i'm stoked on because i threw the envy up the middle yesterday and three putted so we're doing way better than we were yesterday this is kind of the name of the game today is getting the, all the mud off your shoes from all the rain that had come and unfortunately i know a lot of people really like these lone peak sixes uh the ultra shoes i really for some reason do not like them on concrete when it is wet but i bought so many of them on clearance i have a bunch of them Sorry that I'm rambling about that. Hole number three is a 605 foot par four where you just want to get out the gap where I got very lucky. And I'm ranging about 380 feet to the basket, but I have to run down the hill and then throw up the hill. Also real quick, if you hear anything in the background, it's actually just a fan that I have blowing on me. Luckily this mic should be able to pick everything up pretty clean, but it's literally 88 degrees right now in Kansas City. It's like 7 p.m. as I'm recording this in a Walmart parking lot. I need to have this blow on me, otherwise I'm literally gonna die while I record this. So unfortunately, you're seeing this big time lapse here because I thought that I had turned off my GoPro and then turned it back on. Ended up airballing a circle two putt and it leaves me with a 20 foot comeback or slightly uphill, similar to hole one. But I actually am able to put that one in a little bit left side, so the putt still isn't feeling great, but we got it chain high. And you could tell by that smile on my face, I was so stoked to actually make like a 20 to 25 foot putt on the weekend. That just shows you how terrible everything has been over the past couple of days. Just not been able to really focus very well. And I'll talk about it a little bit later, but there's something else that's going on that's probably affecting my release point. Hole number four is of 835 foot par four, but pretty downhill. So I'm actually throwing my Midnight Prowl 2 in Origin, just on this beautiful little turnover line. I just hit it exactly as I want and it puts me straight down here with only about 390 in so i mean hey i'm throwing my origin 430 we don't have to talk about how downhill it is but i'm deciding to throw a strike here the only strike that i have in my bag now and i'm trying to release it on a little bit of hyzer trying to plant the foot there because everything has been slipping i've already slipped a couple times today that i've kind of glanced over but i'm trying to put this on a little hyzer because the hill being graded left to right is going to drag it straight at the basket even if we put it on a little hyzer because it's a pretty neutral disc unfortunately if you look at that really closely on my plant foot i slipped just ever so slightly to the right and it ends up pulling the shot gets kicked out but all i have to do here is pitch up and take a par but pars feel like birdies a lot of times at this course because even par is playing 
over a thousand rated plus one i believe is around a thousand rated so that's kind of the score that we're shooting for today again really nervy putt even from 15 feet downhill and it moves us into hole number five one of the harder holes on the course a 624 foot par four where you have to get out this gap move a little bit to the right on this forehand is what i'm trying to do so that i can have just a hyzer pitch up to the basket and hopefully take at worst a four but this is the slickest tee pad of the day in the moment, I really thought that I slipped on that tee pad, oh, but actually looking back at that footage, I don't think I slipped. I think I anticipated a slip, and because I anticipated it, I ended up overcorrecting on my shot and just threw it into literally the first available tree. So I was really excited to like blame that on a slip, and it just was not a slip at all. I ended up pitching out my honor on a pretty decent Anheuser line. Could have got some more distance, but really happy to even get out to this position where I'm going to try to throw my Midnight Prowl 2 all the way up this hill. But because again, you're running downhill and then you have to throw it up the hill, I just did not get that swing path correct. And I'm behind this tree, which leaves me with no real backhand hyzer. So I'm having to take my Calvin Destroyer, get about another 320 feet of distance on a force over flex shot on the forehand. Don't quite get the nose all the way down and ends up stabling out a little bit early, but 50 feet pin high to the right. I do not want anything to do with that putt. As you've seen, all my putts have looked atrocious. So we're just gonna pitch up and take the easy six. Double bogey, unfortunately. But we can hopefully turn that back around. We're only plus one now through five holes. And like I said, that's a thousand rated. So we're just trying to take pars. And if we can get in birdie position, try to capitalize. Hole number six is a 588 foot par four. I'm throwing my Calvin Destroyer because I want to kind of push into this gap with a skip. Didn't quite throw it left enough. I kept it a little too safe, but it leaves me with this shot a little long of the gap that I want to be. So I'm going to have to force something over slightly. I'm between my honor, my strike and my firebird. And I decided to go with my honor just because I felt like I could turn it over and like put it on the angle through the gap. Probably should have been the firebird on that line because it would have stabled out a little faster, especially because my nose angle on my Anheuser's has been pretty good but we're able to just really easily pitch up this zone. Don't have to worry about a putt and we tap in for another par, which feels good. Sometimes when you're in jail and the course makes those par decisions for you and you can't try to run a stupid putt and miss like I have been doing all weekend, it's pretty good. Hole number seven here is a 411 foot par three. I really like this hole. Unfortunately, I over rotate a little bit and I think my shoes are like in my head because I feel like I'm gonna slip every shot and I do slip around maybe inside of them because I'm not really noticing them slip as much as I felt my feet slipping in the moment. And so maybe I'm just slipping inside of the shoes and I'm trying, I'm kind of want to try out some barefoot shoes. I have 290 in and I'm throwing my gold line pure. Just really wanted to hit that initial gap, which I smoked. Unfortunately, there's OB left and I check up just in front of it luckily but outside the circle don't know why that one looks so confident it's by far the most confident looking putt of the day and it brings us back to only seven strokes lost in circle one compared to circle two and able to save the par moving us into hole number eight which is one of those holes that i don't even think i can reach 756 foot par four but i have to throw this forehand out the gap and again just over rotate maybe slipped inside my shoes maybe just anticipated the slip and throw it straight into the left side having to just pitch out a mid-range here to get myself into the position that i want to be off the tee and even from this position it's 420 into the basket and it's running uphill to throw slightly downhill with ob right so really not even worrying about it i'm gonna try to throw this in to save the par with a pure Looked like a much better run out of my hand, honestly, than what it ended up being. And another really uncommitted, ugly looking butt goes in the basket for a bogey. Now moving into hole number nine, I'm not really still trying to think about scores. I'm still trying to just execute on the next shot. This is gonna be a strike. Actually, my strike that I threw into the pond yesterday is what I threw yesterday, but I'm really trying to focus on a little bit of hyzer through this gap and throwing the disc rather than rotating to get the disc to move forward. Cause I noticed I was like over rotating everything. End up getting through the gap, but because there is that late low ceiling and because it was on hyzer, it just went into the ground instead of like having time to flex out of it. But I have a putt for the two. Good catch by the basket, not a good shot. Hole number 10, only plus one through nine. So we're on pace for that right around a thousand rated round. Really stoked on that. End up thinking that that was gonna be a little too close to the OB, a little too close for comfort, but it should be a relatively routine zone upshot. I missed this upshot yesterday and put it about 30 feet long and ended up missing a putt. So really just trying to put this one underneath the basket. It's only about 195 feet, should be super routine. It did end up hitting it by the basket, but if you're trying to put it underneath the basket, you probably need to leave it a little bit to the right of the basket. You can see I'm kind of fidgeting with my putt because I don't really know how I'm wanting my legs to stand, but just get it chain high, which we do just right side. So again, 
missing another circle one putt, bring us back to eight strokes lost in circle one and another bogey. Bogey, bogey on hole number 10, which is just a routine pitch, pitch, drop in. And I missed it both days. Speaking of missing a hole that you definitely shouldn't have, I'm wanting revenge on hole number 11 because I parked it yesterday and missed a 10 foot sitter putt. I'm gonna try to throw the exact same shot this Anheuser through this left side gap. Unfortunately, I don't turn it over enough. I thought that was a pretty good tree. I thought it just kicked me straight but we'll see what happens in a second because I did notice something really important about my body and fatigue. So unfortunately, I noticed a couple holes back that my elbow is really feeling pain like every time I throw. Early release, late release, just a bunch of missed releases. Surprisingly, like the thing it affects most, I think is honestly the putt because I don't feel like a smooth motion and the putt, I don't know, it's just a repetitive thing there. So I'm excited to be able to work on it after this round. Only have seven more holes. Hopefully we can like try to keep it in the fairway and play smart. Uh, if we can par out, I think I'd be really happy with my score. Um, try to even get a couple birdies, but I definitely, and I think I noticed that in like hole eight, that little forehand drive that I shanked into the woods from slipping. I also just like, wow, was not comfortable. Sleeve should help a bit. I did take an ibuprofen before this and that's how I know it's bad because it still hurts. Luckily, it wasn't the type of pain where I should have DNF'd, and I really didn't want to, because like I want to put together a solid round. I know that playing through injury isn't necessarily the smartest thing in the world, and you see that in this upshot, because again, I just like, it's probably a lack of focus, probably a little bit of like, my body's just not doing exactly what I want it to do. Shank that upshot, and so now we have to make this for the par, for the bogey save, not even the par save. I had ranged it to just about 32 feet, so unfortunately there's another 32 foot miss and we tap in the double bogey. So to go bogey, double bogey on holes that I feel like I should par and birdie most of the time, really unfortunate, and moves to hole number 12, where again, we're wiping off the mud from our shoes. This is a 652 foot par five, because it's pretty tightly wooded. There is a way to get through this fairway and down to the left, and then you just have a simple upshot in to potentially eagle it. And I'm going to disc up a little bit from a mid range, which is maybe what I should be throwing to this strike end up getting such a perfect grip on it. Just the perfect amount of flip up. Maybe needs to finish a little bit straighter. We think it might be a little bit too left. Luckily though, it is still in the fairway-ish. Don't really have a great look. I ended up ranging it to about 250 feet in, maybe a little bit less. I don't fully remember. It's like less than 250 though, for sure. And I'm trying to think about what shot I'm able to throw because there are some flexi gaps. So I pull out my honor, which has kind of been a workhorse for something that I want to be able to glide because I'm throwing from a standstill and I can't really give all the juice of a firebird. End up puring the gap, really calling for the skip and getting myself up to about a 45 foot look for the eagle, which Taking a double bogey on a hole that I feel like I should get. It'd be really nice to erase that right now. Walking up to try to feel the wind. Don't really feel a lot. We are slightly uphill. And I'm really just trying to focus on going through the motions, emptying my head, and really not even thinking about anything at all. Nice. And to be honest with you, I had no idea whether I put it that low, high, or anything. I kind of just let my body take over and it worked. Maybe something that I should have taken into the rest of this round, but spoiler alert, we didn't. But to get that eagle, it was super sick. The three on 12 feels really good. It moves to the whole 13, 364, where yesterday I turned over way too much with my Ducker Destroyer. So I'm throwing my Calvin Destroyer on a turnover line. End up really not throwing it super hard, unfortunately. And it ends up just about four feet short in the OB. So I have this pitch up here. Trying to not make the same mistake that I did yesterday, which is a forehand zone that I threw out of bounds again and took a six on this hole. And honestly, walking up to this hole, I probably should have just laid up, but it was an ego thing where I didn't want to lay up because walk up to this hole, I like didn't even think that I was going to put it in bounds anyways, but like your ego doesn't let you lay up. It was kind of a weird little thing. Hole 14 is a 711 foot par four where I'm going to be throwing forehand forehand basically. There is a backhand play, but I just want to put this forehand almost to the far tall grass, which is about 360. So I know I'm going to be short. I'm just trying to put it straight flat to hyzer shot with my Calvin Destroyer. This is one of the reasons I took the Ducker Destroyer out of my bag as well, because I can forehand this Calvin Destroyer really well. And the Ducker Destroyer, the max weight one, was pretty similar stability to the Calvin, just a little bit flatter. I'm thinking about this Firebird shot. I still have a decent ways out, but it's super downhill. And I just tell myself, throw it on a little bit of hyzer out of your hand, but it comes out dead flat. And I knew that when it comes out dead flat with the same amount of speed that I needed to put it on hyzer, it just had gone OB. So now we have to save from about 40 feet on an elevated basket to try to save the par.
And after going eagle, we give both of those strokes right back on the subsequent couple of holes, unfortunately. And how I talked about when I was talking about my elbow, I really wanted to just stay at two over for the round. So now we need to find two more birdies on these last four holes, including this hole, which is my least favorite hole on the course. Hole 15, 288 feet, straight through this small gap, really kind of a tight line over this water, or there is a rightward gap that you can kind of go through. I ended up deciding to throw my Pathfinder instead of my Z Heat. Honestly, going through my head was which one do I want to lose in the water if I miss? And I decided that I felt like I could throw the Pathfinder better and get it across, which luckily I did, and was able to capitalize on another very uncommitted lower right pocket putt, moving us into hole number 16. Par 5, 956 feet. Trying to just throw my Ducker Destroyer straight out through the gap which I ended up peering nice basically to the same spot that I was yesterday where I threw directly out of bounds. Now, I do know the miss now is to miss it right into the woods because there's no OB into the woods. And I'm deciding between my Echo Star Destroyer and my Ducker Destroyer to throw on a slight amount of turn. Slight amount of turn. Not that amount of turn, which is just way too much. Honestly, I feel like this should just be a forehand, but I was not really thinking about my forehand very much because I haven't been trusting it these last couple weeks. I'm very lucky to be on the outside of these woods. I kind of got pitched out, and we're looking at a gap that I'm trying to throw this Calvin Destroyer through. I'm 350 to the gap, but it is downhill, so I know if I hit that gap and get a straight skip, I can get up and down for the birdie. Unfortunately, throwing those patent pendings, I threw it pretty straight into the ground, but it leaves us a pretty straight up and down for the par. And if I can go par, par, par through these last three holes, I'm really not mad about it. Throw just a nice little Anheuser Flex with my zone. Not really trying to throw it in, but I really love that shot because it slows it down so much that you can kind of give it baby bids while still keeping it close to the basket. Hole well, number 17 is a 461 foot par four, which again, I'm gonna be throwing my Midnight Prowl two through. I was thinking about going Pathfinder today because that's a disc that I think I could throw really well through this one. But for some reason, I'm kind of leaning towards the Heisers today. And this one got a little bit of flip up, unfortunately, into a tree, and it kicks me down. And I have a really stupid idea moving up into this. If you look towards the left side of your screen in like all those trees, I'm thinking about a forehand roller over everything up to the basket. I just do not throw it even close to high enough. And a lot of the reason for that is I don't really have a thumber or a tomahawk. That's definitely something that I want to put in my arsenal. And it's also something that since I hit inside of here, I'm looking through some gaps and I feel like I know how a thumber moves. So I throw my first thumber ever with my honor. Don't know how good it is. That's the first thumber I've ever thrown in my entire life. And I walk up and I absolutely parked it. I'm like beaming because I, that's literally the first thumber I've ever thrown. I knew that it probably panned from the right to the left. And I was like, this looks like the shot shape. So I just kind of chucked it out there and it ended up working out. Not going to use that as proof that I could throw thumbers, but that I got really lucky and was in a hole number 18, trying to get the birdie because I looked at scores and I know that people can push me out of the cash at three over, but if I get to two over, it probably will be very hard for them to do that. So I decided to throw my Pharaoh instead of my Echo Star Destroyer today, just because I was really relying on these hyzers a little bit. It just really decide to put it out to the left on some hyzer and ends up flexing perfectly into even a better position than my drive yesterday which is already pretty close to this gap. I made the mistake yesterday of leaving my envy a little bit low and just trying to play towards the short landing zone where there's kind of like a big circle of safe surrounded by OB that I'm trying to throw into the middle of today giving it a little bit more juice just takes a little more commitment through that gap and luckily I was able to give it just the right amount of turn and just the right amount of speed to put it pretty center cut in this safe zone. Looking up at the basket, I'd range to 250 feet, but uphill. So I'm throwing my Firebird just on a pretty spiky hyzer. I know it's a little bit too much disc. I could probably get there with a the mid or even my flat top Firebird, but I want to just put this on a lot of hyzer and spike it in right next to the basket. end up honestly releasing it a little bit too little hyzer and I'm pretty scared as it skips. I think it probably went OB, but MK gives me the green flag. Big shout out to MK for running these tournaments. And as you can see, it probably circled on the out of bounds and came right back in. And I have this putt for a birdie to basically not quite guarantee my cash because there's still people who have only played like 14 holes, but get me in a position where I've done everything that I can on hole 18 to try to make sure that my cash streak stays alive. Another really bad putt on the left side, but it's in the basket. I got a lot of those today. Finishing out with the birdie there felt really good, bringing us to 10 over par for the weekend. Not great, not what we want to do in three weeks for the KC Wide Open, but for this event, really not the end of the world. Unfortunately, I lost one of my streaks because I did not get a thousand rated round in this event. 
This last round was 994. I was one stroke off from that thousand rated round, so plenty of places where I could have gotten that. Only missed one more circle one putt than I made circle two in this second round, so that's a win, but none of my putts were confident. Like, literally, if you watch all of them, they all were, like, super unconfident putts, so I know what I'm going to be working on for the next couple weeks. Was still able to get into the cash. I finished tied seventh, and they paid out to 11 places because there's 26 people. I cashed $95, and I paid, like, 80 to enter, so I made out, like, one Chipotle bowl with extra protein or something. Really happy to have called that one back, especially as I like did not want to be there that morning. Like I was, it was raining so hard and I was like, please cancel the round. I don't want to have to go play. And so to be able to like fight back mentally, this is a big win moving into these off weeks and then back into what are all going to be big events for my last bunch of events for the year. 978 average for the weekend, which is 10 points above my rating. So my rating should continue to go up. Next ratings update just depends on how I do at the KC Wide Open, but I'm super excited to take a couple weekends off from tournaments, really dive into focusing on my health and more really cool content that I have coming out because I am leaving Kansas City where I am right now probably within the next 24 hours and driving to a couple cool places to meet up with a lot of cool people. If you want to check out the first round, check that out right down there. If you're more interested in another tournament coverage, oh, I have another one in Kansas City. That was a lot of fun. Four different rounds. Check that out right down there. If you don't want to watch those, then don't. Subscribe if you want. I appreciate you so much for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, love you. Bye.